Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to your weekday weekend. My name's Adam, and this is another, like, regular dude vlog or whatever. The last one was a couple days ago about CAD software. I mentioned that I might be doing a video about the P1P, and here it is. Now, as you might notice, it, it's, it's not there yet, and we're going to talk about that. So this is my full experience with the P1P from ordering to unboxing and first use. Um, I'm going to periodically be recording this so that you get the most up-to-date information on it as in the same in the same video if that makes sense so as things go right or wrong you're gonna hear about it because everyone seems to be praising the p1p and that's fine and i'm sure i'm gonna love it in fact i'm so so excited but this journey from ordering to receiving has not been um without its faults so we're gonna hear about that today first off um i was debating ordering it you see um it was this is going to cost about 700 bucks after taxes and shipping and everything, and that's a lot of money. Um, I was really, didn't really have the money for it. You know, I, I wanted it with the auxiliary part cooling fan, or what I've lovingly called the APCF. No one else seems to be abbreviating it, but auxiliary part cooling fan seems to be a mouthful for me. So, anyway, along with the P1P, that was going to cost about 700 bucks after taxes and shipping, and that's quite a bit of money. However, over the past couple months, my Ender 3 V2 Neo has had so many problems. I've replaced the print bed surface. I have um, replaced the nozzle like three times. I replaced the entire hot end um, because the spot for the nozzle, the no first off, the nozzle kept getting jammed beyond repair or ruined, um, clogged beyond repair. So I replaced that two or three times. And then the um, hot end, the screw threads for the nozzle got stripped. So I basically needed a new, I needed a new heater block. But at the time, I didn't know that. I just bought the whole new hot end. It wasn't expensive. So I ran all the cables all the way down to, to the hot end. All these cables are awful. Basically, I had to rebuild a lot of the printer. Um, of course, you don't have to like unscrew the main screws and all that to take apart the gantry. But still, it was a pain. And I don't have a soldering iron or any soldering skill or experience. So twist and tape, unfortunately, for a lot of the stuff. Anyway, and it was working for a bit. Well, and then this happened. I'm going to put a picture up on screen. That happened when I came home from work one day. It was sitting like that. The The cover for the hot end was on the floor, and the giant blob of plastic was around the nozzle. And um, when I pulled the blob of plastic off, it pulled apart the wires to the thermistor. Luckily, the nozzle was undamaged because I spent a good, good amount of money on a nice hardened nozzle, a hardened steel nozzle. But um, the thermistor was borked. So all that wire running that I had to do for the new hot end, I basically had to do it again for the thermistor. So I was thinking about that when I decided that um, maybe it was time to get a P1P. And the perfect time actually showed up because Black Friday came up. They started their Black Friday deals about two weeks ago. Um, it was the 16th. Printer was marked down. Not only that, it comes with uh, it came with two free filament rolls while supplies lasted. My brother messaged me. He ordered it, and I that was my sign that I had to have it. Um, I ordered it with the auxiliary part cooling fan for around six hundred and thirty dollars, including taxes and shipping, which actually wasn't bad since it comes with the two free filament rolls, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I ordered it on eleven sixteen. That's November sixteenth. Shipped out on the seventeenth. Today is the twenty eighth that I'm recording this right now. Um, and it's only being delivered today. Normally, I don't have a problem with UPS, but they pissed me off this weekend. So I understand that um, the 23rd was Thanksgiving in the U.S. I get that. No one's going to work on Thanksgiving. But it was a couple, it was a couple hours away on uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And on Friday, it got to be to the next town over about 25 minute drive away, as in the hub on Friday. That's Friday the 24th. All weekend it sat. Now I know they don't deliver on Sunday, but I expected it Saturday or Monday since it was in the hub. And it didn't happen. So I'm sitting at work, I'm going, well, maybe it's because they've been telling me Tuesday and it needs a signature. So let me go sign it online, and I did, and maybe it'll be here the next day, since now I don't need a signature. So they'll just drop it off. Maybe they were trying to be courteous and deliver it on the day they told me, so that I would be there to sign for it. No. My brothers showed up at the hub, even though he ordered his like 12 hours before mine. My brothers showed up at the hub after mine 
on Monday morning at 4 a.m. Yesterday morning, 4 a.m. His was delivered yesterday, not even five hours later. So mine sat in the warehouse for four days. His sat in the warehouse for two hours and was delivered same day. So I was a little upset about that. UPS, step up your game because it should be first in, first out. Like, that's bullshit. Um, first off, anyway, I mean, like, there would be no way you normally would know if that happened, but my brother and I were identical packages on the same day to the same city and state, and step up your game, UPS. Really? So hopefully it gets delivered today. The weather's kind of bad outside, so I'm hoping they deliver it today. It is apparently on the truck. It's uh, 7.13 in the morning, so we'll see. Aside from UPS, oddly enough, they shipped the printer with UPS, but they shipped the free filament and my auxiliary part cooling fan with FedEx, um, which arrived Friday on the 24th, which was fantastic. It's much lighter and smaller packaging. Um, I received, uh, for my free filament, Lavender Blue PLA Tough and Copper PLA Silk, which is really nice. I thought I was going to get bulk white PLA or bulk black or gray or some horrible color, baby vomit green or something like that, you know, cat shit brown. You know, I was expecting to get horrible colors that didn't sell. Instead, these are pretty nice colors, it looks like. My brother got the same exact colors, which tell me that they were probably still bulk for some reason, but... They're nice colors. I'm not complaining about that. That's fantastic. And it's like an extra $60 value that I got free with Black Friday. So another thing is my brother's printer apparently came pre-installed with the light and the camera. Hopefully mine does as well. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with that when I get my printer later today. But if it does, that's another like $50 or $60 value that I didn't even realize I was getting. So that would be awesome. We'll see. Um, I can't imagine. He said specifically that he did not add that on. So if he got it and I didn't, I'd be very surprised. Um, I guess, again, well, supplies last, but we'll see. So yeah, um, I guess we'll catch back up maybe later today or tomorrow, depending on when I get time. I might do an unboxing. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Just watch. Just watch. Holy shit, this thing is fast. Uh, we'll get to the details in a bit. All right, let's talk unboxing. So I set up a stopwatch to time me while I was unboxing the whole thing. I was going to record it, but I realized that would get in my way and take up extra time. And instead, I just wanted to get a, a actual fair number about how long it actually took me to get this thing set up. So Precursor, I don't really have a whole lot of 3D printer building experience. I've built an Ender 3 V2, and I've built this Ender 3 V2 Neo behind me. So that's about it. Of course, the P1P doesn't need any assembly anywhere near as bad as any of those printers. So anyway, it took me about 30 minutes, including the printer's first boot self-checks. Um, I'm including that time since the marketing does say 15-minute setup from box to printing. So... The self-checks to me are um, 
included in that time since you can't print before them. Um, you do have to connect to an app, which, uh, I mean, you don't have to technically, but if you want uh, wireless like internet printing, then you have to. I did put it in LAM mode because, honestly, I don't want bamboo peeking in on what I'm doing with my printer. Not that I'm doing anything illegal, but still, you know, we've never heard of companies uh, misusing any information that you accidentally willingly give them. Anyway, it did also take me uh, an extra 15 to 20 minutes to put on the auxiliary part cooling fan. I did not uh, include that in the 30 minutes earlier. Um, so about 50 to an hour total. Um, the auxiliary part cooling fan isn't hard. It's just time consuming because of having to remove the whole back panel. So anyway, um, I've also noticed that the included Allen wrenches are a little flimsy. The one at least seems a little flimsy. I mean, it gets the job done. It was able to unscrew the uh, the shipping screws and help me put in the auxiliary part cooling fan. I don't know that I would use it for much other than that. If I were going to do it all over again and I knew I was having to put a P1P together, set it up, I would go grab my personal set. They're a little bit nicer. So far, really the only thing I don't like about the whole printer um, is, for one, the camera, which I did get, by the way. It's not great. Guys, it's really just good enough to make sure your print hasn't failed, and that's about it. You get about one frame per second when you're watching back on the slicer. Um, I don't know if that's the fault of the printer not having the power to stream it, or if that is the fault of the camera. Either way, it kind of sucks because I can do a better time lapse on my Ender 3 V2 Neo using OctoPrint than I can on the P1P, um, which is unfortunate. But whatever. The only other thing I don't like other than that is the depths of the printer. I didn't realize how deep the whole thing had to be. The filament roller is on the rear, which means you need room for that, plus enough room to actually put the roll on. Which means, like, if the roll is this big, you know, and it's up against the wall, you can't drop the roll down. It doesn't go through the roller. So you need enough room next to it to slide it on, which means you need an extra about 10 centimeters behind the printer uh, of space. To put that in perspective, um, including the printer, space on a desk wise you need about 52 centimeters or about 20 and a half inches about 20.47 inches of total depth for the printer um, compared to about 36.8 centimeters about 37 centimeters or 14 and a half inches for the ender 3 like that's that's crazy um so you do need basically an extra six inches of space behind the printer for the P1Ps. If you have limited desk space, consider that. Um, now I did uh, fix the problem for me. You might see that my filament roll is on the wall there. It's not behind the printer. That's because in about uh, two and a half hours, I was able to take an old filament roll design that I had and turn it into a wall mounted roller. Uh, I designed it and finished it printing in about two hours because of this amazing printer, even in PETG. Um, people are saying that the default PETG settings for this printer are amazing, and I would have to agree. Um, I have never been able to successfully print PETG on my Ender 3 V2 Neo. Um, it's not particularly hard to print, but it's hard to print good quality. Anyway, I used the included uh, 3M strong double-sided tape that they include with the printer for the um, auxiliary part cooling fan. Uh, they include extra pieces. So I used those to stick it to the wall last night and it's still holding. So I think it'll be fine. The design's on printables. So if you have a similar problem and you can mount it next to it, I would recommend that. Other than that, wow. Holy crap is this thing fast. There's a 26 minute Benchy that's pre-sliced on the SD card. Um, seven minutes out of that is prep time. So that is, that's crazy. And the Benchy looks really good. Like, there's a little bit extra stringing, a little bit of a quality drop in the 20-minute uh, the version compared to the 47-minute version that I sliced. But, wow, compared to a little over two hours on my Ender 3 V2 Neo for a good quality Benchy of the same of the same caliber, it's insane. <laughs> like, ch ch check this out. Just check out the footage.
So yeah, guys, um, it is an amazing printer. I love it so far. It's very loud. I don't know that I'll be able to live stream or record a video with it going. It is very loud, especially with the auxiliary part cooling fan. But oh my god, is it fast. Like, wow, is this thing fast. Um, my brother told me he was having some bed adhesion issues. I haven't had that problem. Um, I don't know uh, what he's doing differently. Um, but, I mean, they do include glue stick in the box, so... Hopefully that'll fix his problems. He's also printing really small flimsy stuff. He wanted to try that chain mail, you know, that everyone's seen. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This is my real honest opinion um, about the P1P unboxing starting experience and my my real reactions to everything. Um, hopefully uh, it's helped you in some way. Um, until next time, next weekend, I'll see you later.